Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm Rossana Ducato. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the first Scotland conference on sustainable innovation, law, and policy in a post COVID world. It's great to have you in Sterling. And it's very nice to see you in 3D. And welcome also to the person that are attending online. Hello there. And thanks for joining us via Zoom. So this is going to be our first hybrid event of the Scottish Law and Innovation uh, Network. So it's going to be a dense but exciting <coughs> two-day meeting for discussion, brainstorming, arguing, do some network with some coffee breaks in between. Don't worry. Now, regarding this event, it has been a long journey, not always an easy one, you know, due to some global circumstances. But we are here, and actually, there are a lot of persons and entities that had allowed to make this network and this event possible. So please allow me to start by thanking the Royal Society of Edinburgh, who is generally is generously uh, supporting all, all our Scotland uh, activities. <coughs> then the network would not have been, would not have seen the light without Guido and Martin, who are my, you can also applaud them. They are my partner in crime. <laughs> they have been my partners in crime for the application to the Royal Society. I wish to thank in particular Guido, because he's actually the mastermind behind this idea of putting together scholars, researchers, uh, professionals, experts in the fields of law and innovation based in Scotland and make them talk to each other. Very simple idea, but something that was missing. My personal thanks then goes to the organizing committee for this conference. So again, Guido, thanks. William Webster, uh, Mo Egan, uh, Arletta Gureska, is actually teaching right now, but she will be with us in a minute. And Xiao Li, nice to uh, thank you very much for all your work on this conference. They have put a lot of time, effort, and work in this event. So if everything, something goes wrong, you know who is responsible for that. But actually, no, no, I mean, they've been amazing, and I'm part of that committee too. So uh, if you're here today, I also have to thank you all fantastic members of our Scotland community. You have been proactively engaging in all our activities, so forth. The enlightening talks, I see some very familiar faces who contributed with some, with some brilliant uh, talks. And then thanks all for, for sharing all the publications, news, call for, call for papers, for exchanging your ideas within the whole network. That's precisely the goal of our association. So I'm sure that we are going to have a great time together over the next two days. The program is amazing. The titles of the session too. So I can't wait to kick off the event with you. Uh, but before doing that, there are some, uh, the famous housekeeping rules. So we don't instruct me uh, as a perfect flight attendant. So I'm going to repeat what he just said to me. So the emergency exit, there's there, there just one in this room. So over there, you can follow that sign and then go to your left. And then immediately to your right, you will see some saloon style door. And then there is the, in the uh, outdoor patio and you should be safe there. Second point, uh, there are not going to, uh, we are not going to have any uh, drill, uh, how they are called, drill plants. Uh, no drill plants. So. No drill plants. So if there is a fire alarm, there is likely to be a fire. So <laughs> reach the exit, the one that I was uh, saying. Um, earlier. What else? Uh, COVID measures. So as previously communicated via email, uh, you are all invited to wear your mask indoor unless you are exempted or you are seated and distanced. So I see that everything is correctly in place. What else? This is the personal computer of Guido. So you will be called to do your presentation here. So people online will see your face. So before approaching the computer, 
here there is a dispenser so you can wash your hands then put your hands on with a computer do whatever you want well do your presentation and then <laughs> <laughs> you can also check his emails in the room if you want uh, or buy something with the credit card uh, information stored <laughs> on, on the laptop and then wash your hands again i think it's all yes did i forget one Okay, so it's uh, with, play, with a great pleasure that I'm going to open the panel of our conference. So I will invite all the speakers of the panel to join the uh, the main the main table to come to the to come to the table. We are going to have four speakers, members or friends of our community. They are coming from the world of practice, industry, and civil society. They will introduce their work and some recent activities that they are currently doing and that can be relevant uh, to the scope of our network. Each of them will have 10 minutes and I will uh, supervise that this time limit is respected and then we will have the we will open the floor for questions from you and also from online so. I will start and perhaps I can already share the relevant PowerPoint presentation from her. Should we just get should we ask the person uh, I don't know if it's the same. Yes. So all the panelists can join. I have to do it from here. Yeah. So the uh, it's not you here. Yeah. Perfect, Amanda. You can unmute yourself. Great. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to turn this immediately. So we will start exploring the state of the art and future perspective of uh, law and innovation in Scotland with uh, Amanda Miller. Amanda is a lawyer who has committed a legal career to ensuring that voices of the underrepresented are heard. Uh, a value that she brought with her during her time as president of the Law Society of Scotland. Apart from her professional career, Amanda has also worked as a tutor and lecturer in law at the University of Strathclyde, Glasgow Caledonian, and Dundee. As a representative of the profession, Amanda was first elected council in 2010, and then she served on a number of committees. The list is very long, so Amanda, apologies if I cannot uh, read all the committees that you have chaired. Uh, it's amazing. Amanda is a founder member of Law School Tech Advisory Board, and we'll probably hear something interesting from um, about this initiative of the Law Society. So I'm going to turn the audio in the dial. The power of technology, you know? <laughs> so you have human, human intelligence here operating. Uh, okay, and you should be able to listen better in this way. So Amanda, the floor is... Grand, good to go. Uh, thank you, uh, Rosanna, and thank you uh, also, Guido, uh, for the uh, invitation. I feel potentially a little bit uh, out of my depth on the basis that my being a founder member of Law Scott uh, Tech uh, Advisory Board has had me continuing to say that I am uh, the non-techie uh, in the room, and I find it a constant um, and fascinating uh, challenge uh, being involved in something uh, that I, I I'm not convinced I know a huge amount about but I think that's that's part of part of the joy of it uh, to be able to bring uh, a different perspective uh, in relation to that I, I think it's great uh, that the law, law society set up the law Scott Tech advisory board and to give you a little bit of background uh, in relation to that uh, law society was thinking ultimately 
uh, in terms of the profession, we need better technology. And four years ago, uh, when we started to look at this, it was the case that when we talked about technology for the legal sector and other technology that was impacting the legal sector, such as fintech, civtech, most practitioners would glaze over and say, uh, I'm not a techie, so what's this got to do with me? Or worse, uh, some kind of fear that a robot was going to take their jobs with the rise of artificial intelligence. Other members, when asked, what can the Law Society of Scotland uh, do for you? When we asked this question in the context of technology, uh, the answers we would get would invariably be along the lines of, we need to be embracing technology, but uh, to do that, we need to know what's out there and also to be able to influence its development. Scotland has uh, the fourth largest financial services hub in Europe behind only London, Paris and Frankfurt, and it is the fund management capital of Europe. So even though we are smaller uh, in terms of jurisdiction than England and Wales, we punch well above our weight. And while we are home to many English and international firms, many of our purely Scottish firms have less resources than some of their global competitors. Uh, and you can appreciate that this was one of our other challenges. So that then leads us to Law Scott Tech. In Scotland, we already had the globally respected FinTech Scotland community led at the time uh, by the energetic Stephen Ingledew, and now uh, with the chief executive equally purposeful uh, of Nicola Anderson. Both of these fantastic individuals are on our advisory board. This model of bringing together the financial services sector with technology and academia has been uh, tremendously successful for them and so we chose to adopt this model and in October 20, 2018 uh, we launched uh, Law Scott Tech, a community of those working within the legal sector, technologists and academia, all working to transform legal tech. Law Scott Tech is a collaborative model that works across commerce, finance and industry uh, with government and overseas bodies to uh, match the deep domain knowledge held within the profession, whether they are solicitors in large firms in our cities or small firms in rural, rural areas. And you will appreciate we have a lot of them in Scotland, uh, but also across England and especially in Wales as well, or those working in-house. Law Scott's Tech purpose, our end game ambition for Law Scott Tech is to stimulate legal technology, innovation in Scotland, lead innovation in Scotland, which will deliver practical benefits for those working in the justice and legal sectors and their clients. Our work is focused on delivering new technology, identifying what technology already exists, bringing in technology from other sectors and applying it to the legal sector and working with experts to produce guidance. A couple of uh, current examples, using electronic signatures, advice and guidance on how to procure IT uh, that works uh, and is helpful so that uh, members who perhaps don't know a huge amount about it, they have some understanding of the questions that they should be asking when they're looking at their IT provision. We've also held numerous roundtables and events, published our learning, uh, including key challenges that the sector faces. Our message has always been, don't just embrace legal tech, but influence it, influence its development, shape it. We have a different jurisdiction, we have different jurisdictional needs, and therefore there are some technological requirements, uh, and it's important to be shaping it rather than trying to necessarily automatically pull something off the shelf uh, that you spend potentially more time trying to make it work uh, for our particular purpose. In terms of the advisory board, the work of Law Scott Tech is overseen by an advisory board. Um, as I've already mentioned, it consists of solicitors. It has a representative from the Faculty of Advocates, not the representative that we have here today, but another representative. And those working in law firms in Scotland, technology companies and representatives from the fintech community. This ensures that we have a wide vision uh, of our work that is transparent and open to scrutiny. By facilitating a constructive dialogue, we have learned so much uh, in just one year. We have now stronger relationships around the world as we seek to collaborate where we can. That's been a bit of a challenge in the current, in the recent circumstances, but looking at technology, it's important that we continue to seek to develop cross-border opportunities if we want to engage tech companies to invest in any jurisdiction. 
We are founding members of the Law, Law, Law Tech UK Regulatory Response Unit, which not only helps legal tech companies navigate the legal regulatory landscape, but also strengthens our own relationships with other regulators across the UK. I mentioned earlier legal technologists. In 2018, we started Law Scott Tech. Last, we also launched our legal technologist specialist accreditation to recognise those who can be both a lawyer and a techie. And actually, I think we now have some who are techies who are not lawyers, but have some understanding of the sector. We remain unique in this offering in the UK, and we believe globally this year that we plan to uh, introduce a certification programme to help ambitious practitioners and others working in the legal sector skill up and achieve accredited legal technologist status. This status is a high bar and available to anyone from anywhere around the world who can satisfy our standards. The certification programme will be available online and around the world. So what's already out there? There are 41 members of the Law Scott Tech community, too many of them for me to list uh, in a 10 minute window that I'm already uh, eating quite significantly into, but they are all available to see on our website and you see the website details uh, on uh, my contribution towards PowerPoint, which is the extent of one slide. They offer a wide variety of solutions, and importantly, they work together to accelerate the adoption of legal technology by the sector. They also help tell us what we need to do to help them. And it is vital that this two-way dialogue that has helped us help the profession, so that we help us help us help the profession and vice versa. It needs to be a two-way street. In relation to what our firms are saying, in relation to the work that's been done, several firms have told us that they see a lot of legal tech like islands in the ocean without any way of connecting one another. Input and output are not what lawyers are looking for. The effort to interface different pieces of tech to each other to give a coherent service to a client can be time consuming, which can drive people back to old ways of working. And in the current climate, old ways of working is arguably not the way forward. Firms are asking legal tech providers to collaborate to make their solutions interact better. Firms are also telling us that the basics are still as important as ever. The less exciting infrastructure solutions that are essential foundations to enable the sexier new innovative solutions. It's not all about customer experience. Let us not forget that efficiencies improve profits and that that's just as important. It also facilitates businesses being able to continue to invest and develop. Is this a threat or an opportunity? One of our advisory board members was misquoted in 2018 by an American media outlet saying AI could replace human interaction in, men, in mergers and acquisitions work. It was a phone call and there were some jargon barriers, so it was not intentional and the rest of the article put it into context. However, what was actually said is, AI can help firms reduce the risk in mergers and acquisitions work to a minimal level, but it will not, will not replace the role of the lawyer. Instead, it will deliver a better service. This is our view of legal tech. It is not a threat, it is complementary. It will speed up work. It will support lawyers doing a better job it will lower risk, and it will importantly help lawyers across the globe rebalance their work and personal life. Now show me a jurisdiction where we don't need to help lawyers do that. History has shown us that when we replace manual labor with machines and technology, yes, the employment landscape changes, but it doesn't diminish. Is some technology coming along that will compete with law firms? Yes. But does that threaten firms? Not in my view. Millions, if not more, people around the world are denied access to justice because they cannot afford it. A society where justice is accessible to all, not just in criminal cases, but in civil cases, and the full breadth of matters cannot, in my view, be bad for the legal sector. The more people who know their rights, the better a society we live in. But it is always going to be the trusted advisor, the compassionate, empathetic human, the lawyer who will ultimately be relied upon to come to people's aid. 
Now, sometimes people want to know about relationships that we might build in terms of Law Scott Tech, and you will see from our website that we have a strategic partnership with Amicus, who do a lot of uh, uh, work in relation to supporting uh, members of the legal profession. They've provided a number of products that not only reduce risk in firms, they aid compliance and reduce overall costs. Uh, they are also useful tools for firms to market their services. And that's important in terms of being able to continue and develop sustainability. Ethics. This is a law conference. Ethics is important. Ethics are fundamental in my view. The International Bar Association Conference in Rome in 2018, an entire day was devoted to discussing the ethical arguments around liability and AI in particular. And that's going to be an ongoing conversation. That's not what we are here for. I think the biggest risk to legal tech is failure of lawyers to engage in it, to shape its development, to leave it to others who are not lawyers or don't have any comprehension of the sector and its standards and its contribution to civil society. That's not to diminish the importance of the ethical argument. It says here, I love the law. I, I love elements of the law. Um, and, and like any lawyer from any co uh, corner of the globe, I will willingly debate jurisprudence, up, perhaps not till the end of time, but I'll certainly debate ethical standards, uh, particularly in the current climate, uh, for quite some time. But we don't have a shortage of people who can help us with that. Uh, there, are, there are much brighter, more capable people at this conference today who can, who can debate uh, a, a, about ethics uh, and the importance of that in relation to dealing with technology. But in order to contribute to that debate, you need to be in the debate about technology within the legal profession. And that's what Law, law Scott Tech is there for, focusing on getting lawyers to speak up, matching their experience with the skills of our finest technologists and some of our finest brains with a variety of skills. Now, I'm very conscious of time um, and simply want to say to you now, thank you for listening. I'm happy to participate in the questions later on. Back to you, Rosanna. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Amanda. Um, yeah, I mean, your words about uh, the importance of uh, the figure of the legal technologist and the fact that we have to drive uh, the building and the construction of this technology rather than, you know, just uh, suffer and be subject to this legal technological determinism. Yes, that was a very good point. Uh, then I think that there will be some questions uh, during the Q&A about this uh, accreditation program that you have that, as you were saying, is unique of the uh, Scottish uh, environment. So uh, it's going to be particularly interesting uh, for us. So I'm going to give the word, the floor now to the next speaker, uh, Mariano. Uh, Mariano Delisanti is a legal and policy officer at the Open Rights Group, where he supports strategic litigation and political advocacy efforts. He currently works on promoting privacy in the online advertising sector, and I quote, 